You ready? You ready? Oh, you're so cute. Oh, let's go. Oh, let's go. Twindy, let's go. Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead Pater with you today. An important video. A lot of you are asking about this and you're going to want to know how to do this appropriately when the time comes for you. And that is how to transition your baby chicks out of their brooders, whether that's already outdoors or maybe in your kitchen. How do you acclimate them in your coop with your larger flock? How do you adjust them in the barn? We're gonna show you how we do that, okay? The weather has already broke. We're actually supposed to be in the high 50s tomorrow. So this is a great time to adjust them. They're fully feathered, okay? So we're gonna get them out and get them acclimated. So let's show you how we do it. Are you helping? Are you gonna help me carry everything? I seriously doubt it. All right, so this is what I'm going to be doing. Before I move everything, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. The large dog crates. Do you see this right here? This is going to be the trick of the trade. If you don't have a stall or at somewhere in your barn that's already separated that you, that is easy to put chicks in, okay, so that they have access to and can acclimate next to other chickens, a dog crate is what I have found to be the most helpful item on the homestead for this particular situation okay so I'm gonna be carrying this I can't film it while I carry it so heavy in fact I'm probably gonna to have to have help they're very heavy when they get this size so what we're gonna be doing we're actually gonna be doing it twice we're gonna be putting this in with the buff Orpingtons it's gonna be a little bit crowded but it's only temporary so it's gonna be okay we're also gonna be taking another one whether I use this one or use one that's already in the barn for the silkies so let's get them set up and then we'll show you how we set it up and we'll show you the babies in there. The weather's working with us, so we gotta take advantage of it. Let's get rocking it and rolling. All right, guys, so this is, it's getting dark. I apologize, and it's windy. High winds tonight up on the mountain. Okay, so I've brought this in. This is not a permanent situation. Hey, don't even think about it, girl. <laughs> so this is going to be in here. I'm going to set up a small water and food situation. I'm going to put the babies in here. I'll also, uh, at some point tonight or tomorrow, I'll put in a perch for them, okay? And I'll watch it every day. We will monitor what happens here. The buffs come in, and they roost, and they hang out, and they're here in the early morning. So that will give time for acclimation. But they do go out a lot. But they're going to be very curious. When I say the buffs, I mean the big buffs. They're going to be curious. You also have these curious Georges all over in here, too, right? But they're separated, okay, on purpose. And as you can see, the buff girls have been busy today. We like that. So we're going to get these babies out here. If I have to change this up, I will. Now, for those of you that are asking, why in the world are you doing this? Can't you just throw them out, out there? No. There is a pecking order. There is an acclimation time. They have to get used to each other. Because if they don't, you could have problems in terms of that readjustment of the pecking order they can then tell it bro they can peck the smaller ones once that starts happening if you have a bullying situation happen if there is blood then you can move into cannibalism that's chickens for you this whole jazz of they don't eat meat and blah 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 is a bunch of baloney okay the baloney you don't like okay so i'm gonna move them out here we're gonna get them set up and we're gonna watch it every day. If I have to change it, I will. But you have to start with some type of situation like this, people. You can't just throw them out there. I have readjusted and acclimated um, this type of situation, had great success in a week. Sometimes it's been longer. Sometimes I've let them out, I think it's going pretty good, and oop, that didn't go so well, I put them back in. You just have to gauge it. 
okay? It's not a one-size-fits-all situation depending on you, your area, your hens, your flock, the dynamics. So let's get them out here. Let's get them going. Hey, girls. What are you doing? Hi. You are so pretty and laying all these pretty eggs. I love them. Yes, I do. Thank you. What? What'd she say? Are you gossiping? You are... You're kidding me. Uh-huh, that's what I thought too. I did. Okay, listen up, A-Team. Listen up. We got a new group of uh, troops moving into the coop. I need you to be uh, sweet. Be cooperative. Yes, that's what I want to see right there, Missy. Liking it. So, just giving you a heads up on what's coming. We're getting new troops. Okay, you ready? You ready? You're so cute. Yeah. What is all this? Oh, there's the big babies. Oh my gosh. Let's go. You're the new kid in town, huh? Let's go. Yeah. Butterscotch, are you ready to rock and roll? They're almost as big as butterscotch here. See? So last, there's six total. So we're going to put them all out here. So far, so good. And then we're going to put the silkies in the barn, in the silky stall, there's only two of them in their own separate um, cage, just so. Okay. Okay, Miss Impatient. Ooh. Ooh. Let's go. <laughs> okay, clearly we have a what in the world is going on situation. But again, this is to keep them safe, to get them adjusted. So we'll bring in the water, the food, and I'm going to look for a perch and see if I can have that at least by morning. So this is how we're doing it. Let's see what else we can find. All right, guys. Let me open this up so it will be nice for everybody to see. They have their water on a block. They don't know what to think. This is a whole new world for them. I have placed right back there. If you can see it, I know it's dark. This is by design. We'll talk about that in a second. See right there, I've got a tomato steak. That's going to be their simple perch. They're all up here at the front. And, you know, guys, they're going to make messes, okay? This is just like acclimating a two-year-old you know, to anything else, okay? They don't understand, it's a new world. They will adjust, expect some messes, expect some unplanned situations and work with them, okay? Works great. Now what I probably will also end up doing is putting something across the top here so that my big chickens are not roosting up there. And if they do, they hop up there, they're going to, okay? I'm telling you but you have to adjust for that. So I'll probably put some type of um, plastic covering or tarp on the top so that they don't get up there and the poop comes down on top of these babies, okay? So know that also. But this works really well, guys. It's worked for me really, really well for a long time. Thanks for watching. We're gonna get the two little silkies moved and we're gonna watch these guys. We'll keep you updated. This is how we've done it. It's worked very effectively for us and this is what I'm gonna recommend for you. Oh, before I forget, why are we doing it at night? so that tomorrow morning when the sun comes up, it's like, oh, I knew something was in here all night. It's not shock and awe. Moving broody hens, moving babies, and doing things like this is best to do right before bed. Okay, I've got a chicken situation over here. Good job, good. Solid performance. Say hi. Say, I'm messy. Say, I'm messy. Yeah, let's go to the barn. You ready to go and be with the big guys? You sure are cute. Yes, let's go. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.